Welcome everybody to the presentation of the first activity from the subject Learning Mechanics from Engineering Failure. Our group is Tamara, Edgar, Luis, Gerard and Victor. On July 29, 1995, the Sampung department store located in Seoul, South Korea, collapsed due to a blatant disregard for structural precautions and corrupt businesses. Practices lead to the structure collapsing with over 1,500 customers still inside the structure. The addition of a fifth floor to the structure and the dragging of air conditioners along the roof overloaded the structure. The collapse of this structure left 937 people injured and had a death toll over 500 people. The progressive collapse of this structure was due to a build-up of prolonged weakening of the building leading up to 29th of July 1995. On that day, the structure reached its breaking point, causing the building to collapse at 5.57 minutes p.m. From the point of critical failure, it only took 20 seconds for the entire south wing of the structure to collapse. In April 1995, cracks started to appear in the ceiling of the fifth floor. Now let's explain the timeline of the day, 29th of June 1995. 8.05 a.m. Store facility manager investigates a note left by the night shift security ward. The security ward heard strange noises in the roof during the night. 10.02 a.m. Store facility manager finds a large crack around one of the department store's columns, column 5E. Restaurant where the column is located is closed. Midday. Customers hear strange sounds. The structure starts to have small vibrations. 12.30 p.m. Store facility manager thinks air conditioning units are to blame for vibrations. He shuts them off. 4 o'clock p.m. The store facility manager explains the, to the head manager that the cracks around column 5E have increased to 4 inches since the morning. The structural engineering who built the store complex is present at that meeting. He recommends closing the store immediately for urgent repairs. The head manager refuses. 5.40 p.m. Customers hear a loud noise from the top of the floor. The ceiling shift. 5.47 p.m. Customers hear an even louder disturbance from the top floor. 5.52 p.m. Entire building vibrates violently. Building progressively collapses in less than 20 seconds. In the mid-80s, South Korea economic development led to a boom in the construction and retail industries. This, accompanied by the hosting of 1988 Olympics in Seoul, led to many construction contracts, too many for firms in Seoul to handle. International construction firms were not allowed to sink contracts in this caused an overload on already stressed local firms. Non-stop contracts lead to constant construction and eventually lack supervision as well as corruption. Mixing greed and loose supervision lead to appealing disasters and horrifying discoveries. Two separate construction companies built the Sampung department store on the site of a former landfill. Husun Construction had originally been contracted to build the entire structure, but were dropped after they refused to drastically change the building plans, which included adding a fifth floor. With only a foundation and lower levels completed, Sampung executives hired their own construction company to finish the superstructure. The change implemented by Sampung in house contractors changed the entire layout of the building. Originally, the building was designed to be an office block, but became an open plan department store. The additional fifth floor was intended to be a roller skating ring, but became a traditional Korean restaurant. By the time the construction was completed, the building was a fair cry from its original plans. The plans revealed many disturbing secrets about the collapse. The conversion from an office block to a retail store meant escalators would be necessary on every floor. Cutting holes in every slab for an escalator weakened the structural integrity of each slab. Floor columns had been weakened to meet fire regulations as well. Also, the span between each column was nearly 36 feet, a dangerously large spacing made in an attempt to maximize floor space. The crucial element of collapse came from the fifth floor whose construction refused to build. The fifth floor added extra weight to the entire structure, but its conversion from a skating ring to a restaurant added significantly more weight. 
Traditional Korean restaurants do not have chairs and customers sit on the floor. Sampung executive wanted heated floors for their customers, and that added four extra feet of thickness to the fifth floor slab. Also, the fifth floor columns did not align with the columns underneath, leading to load being transferred from the column to the slab and through another column instead of column to column. Furthermore, the roof structure was found to be extremely inadequate for heating and cooling systems they were supporting. Yet, the building had stood over for five years. What actually caused the building to collapse? The air conditioning units were placed on the roof in order to keep the noisy machinery away from surrounding skyscrapers. Investigators soon learned that the air conditioning units on the roof had been moved due to noisy complaints from surrounding buildings anyway. Instead of hiring cranes and professional moving teams, the units simply had been dragged across the roof, creating huge cracks. It also created a downward force on the support columns and column 5E was critically damaged and cracked. When the air conditioning units were turned on, the vibrations were sent through the cracked roof, down the mismatch and their sized columns and through the rest of the building. The constant vibrations of the air conditioning units caused the cracks to widen in column 5E, leading to critical failure on June 29, 1995. Although these dangers were present for years, the executives ignored other warnings. Even on the day of the collapse, structural engineering determined the building unsafe, but the store remained open. The Sampung department store collapsed due to ignorance and punching sheer failure. At the end, John Lee, chairman of Sampung, was found guilty of criminal negligence and jailed for 10 years. His son, Hang Sang Lee, was jailed for seven years for corruption and accidental homicide. In conclusion, the collapse of the Sampung department store could have been easily prevented. From the beginning, signs of danger were evident. The addition of the fifth floor was completely unnecessary. Greed led the executive of Sampung to hastily make decisions that only benefit their business.